This is EA Sports coverage of the PGA Tour. It's opening round coverage of the Alberta Classic. We have already begun. Let's pick up with the action at hole number four. As we catch up with today's featured golfer, Frank, what's the key to generating some momentum? Just hitting good shots. I know it sort of sounds like the old cliche, but uh, plenty of opportunities. A few 10, 15 foot putts start going down. This round will change dramatically. Appears to be a smart shot, Frank. Yeah, no problem here. That's going to fly all the way. Terrific golf shot. And now, that for an easy birdie. Locked in on the read and the speed. Setting himself up for a good weekend, the Wiley Golf Instructor makes his birdie. Back on the tee here at Banff Springs, fifth hole, 424 yard par four. What's the setup here, Frank? Well, it's very tempting to try and hit a draw because uh, that's the way in which the hole is shaped. But uh, the, main, the main goal is to make sure that you can take that second bunker, the one on the left side, out of play with that tee shot. Well, it looks as though they're going to need to use all their strength to sort of hack it out of that rough, missing it off the tee here. We moved that one out there, but he is not going to like the lie. Uh, that moved down in the rough. Frank, in golf, as we know, there's short grass and there's long grass. We all want to be in that short grass, but it doesn't always work out that way. So what's the most important element from the shot, from the rough? You have to be a little bit more conservative first and foremost because you can't guarantee a perfect strike out of the long grass. So therefore you have to look around around the greens, maybe short, to the right, to the left, and realize what's involved. And also just give yourself a slightly bigger target. Coming out of the rough and right up next to the hole. Frank, this would be a nice way to jumpstart the round. Yeah, his momentum uh, can quickly go in the right direction if he makes this. Well, that was a good-looking putt, just not falling right now. Sadly, he's going to be disappointed. A makeable putt right here. He is currently sitting at one under par. Frank, that's a par, and onward we go. Now at the sixth hole here at Banff Springs, it's a short par four, only 373 yards, and the short par four, Frank, all the rage in golf course architecture these days. 
A lot more strategy involved when uh, you've got a hole that you can nearly reach with a tee shot. It's how far back do you leave it, what sort of distance you want that second shot. All those things to compute. Uh, Straightforward, a little bit uphill. Basically, it's what you want for your second shot. There's always advantage of hitting it further than most, Rich, and straighter than most. When you put the two together, it's just straight up a head start. Well, you have to be thinking about birdie here on this approach shot at the sixth, Frank. A good aggressive tee shot, to, pretty close to the narrow neck of that green. Uh, awkward whether you try and hit a little pitch and run or try and hit a lofted wedge and, uh, and sort of pitch that ball a little closer to the hole. Frank, how about that? I couldn't believe that too. I mean, could have hit the flag and bounced away instead straight in. Amazing shot and really deserves it. Now to the second part. It's called hoodoo. Do you know what hoodoo means? It means bad luck, actually, so you don't really want to be thinking about that on this tee shot. 602 yards if you belt one off the tee. Well, you might avoid the bad luck. Ah, nice. Looks good. Pretty good drive here. Another straight one. Frank, this is a golf course where if you were caddying for a player might remind them to stop and smell take, the roses and smell the roses take it all in right i mean it's that kind of a golf course yeah we play a lot of sterile venues now i think is the the best way to put it 7500 yards plus and and we don't get to smell the roses so you come up here it's a long trip you know it takes you a while to get here that's for sure flying to calgary drive up here um it's known as a scenic area uh, with the ice fields but you do you you get to sort of embrace nature and, and realize it's an outdoor game um, and that's one of the benefits of it. Crucial eagle attempt on the way. Frank, I'm not saying he should pull out driver here, but this is a long putt. Greens are fast, though. You never know. Good line, good pace. Might have a chance. It's a good kick. It's only in the first cut. Not too That's bad. not too bad. Frank, I like the way he sort of starts his swing a little bit on the outside and then drops it right on plane. Ball sitting down here in the rough. He's digging in. Good birdie right there. Yeah, this game, when you can't win, it's all about top 10s, top 20s. Currently, that's exactly where they stand. Now to hole number eight. It's another par three with some water. Frank, only 150 yards. This is the shortest hole in the golf course. But distance controlled is still very important here. If you can get the right distance, you could perhaps aim 10 or 15 feet left of the flag. You're only going to have a 10 or 15 foot putt. So uh, just, just think of that. Water on the right there. Maybe just aim a little further to the left. You can still make birdie. No problems there. Really good approach shot. And now, good look at birdie. This one just requires a little bit of focus.
Wow, that was so close, Frank. Just time to forget that one. I mean, he couldn't hit that much better. Just a couple of feet. Good solid work right there and stays at four under. That's the end of round one, and we saw a lot of good golf out there today, Frank. And it was a bonus to uh, anyone that got off to a good start today. Presented by EA Sports and the PGA Tour. It's second round coverage of the Alberta Classic. Well, here we are at the 14th hole. It's a par four, 442 yards. You like this hole, Frank? I do, but if you were spraying it off the tee here, then there's all sorts of problems. Bunkers left, trees right. Uh, this is a fairway you must hit. That is massive off the tee. Meters, yards, I don't care how you measure that. That's got to be what? 300 meters, 325 yards, something like that. Frank, really good chance from this position to make a birdie. Yeah, really the only thing he's looking at right now is the flag. Uh, this is a green light special. Well, there's a big green. And they're going to use every inch of it. That will be a great look at birdie. Getting set now over the putt. Frank, we haven't seen a whole lot of that, but no doubt it feels good. Now to the 15th tee, and Frank, this looks like a fun shot to hit. It won't play its full yardage because of that elevated tee, but uh, a good crank, a good one out here. We might see one of those 350, 360 plus yard drives. contact good result that one is in the fairway down there about 290 yards Frank you played in conditions all over the world here come the winds now what's the mindset well this is really what separates the men from the boys this is where you've got to tell yourself and it's an advantage to you um, obviously the scores will go up a little bit um, given the conditions but once again this is gonna suit the stronger player today you like the old phrase swing easy when it's breezy Definitely when you're hitting it into a head breeze, but um, if down breeze, tear it up a little bit, try and ride that wind some more. He's making the game look very simple right now. 
see it, hit it, and he's got it right on track. Made par yesterday, this one for birdie. So into the top 15 on the leaderboard with that birdie. A few more, and who knows, maybe top 10 or top 5. Frank, the 16th hole, 414 yards, par 4, is nicknamed GOAT. Would, would that be greatest of all time, or is it just because the possibility you, you could see old Billy out there here in the Canadian Rockies? Uh, I'd like to think it's the, uh, the greatest of all time. Uh, I've never seen a GOAT hit a draw, that's why, and that's what's needed off this tee once again. The first bunk, you should easily be able to carry that, and, uh, well... If you're the greatest of all time, this is a fair way, you certainly have. Well, that's got to be 300 yards, isn't it? Now to the second shot here at the 16th, and Frank, what's ahead? Uh, minimally uphill, but uh, it actually plays uphill. The reason why is because all that front section of the green uh, rolls back towards the player. So you've got to carry the ball all the way to the flag. Good looking shot right here. See if you can get this one to drop here at the 16th for a birdie. It's that sneaky distance. for another birdie, eight under par for the tournament. Now to the 17th, 374 yards, and Frank players might be licking their chops here. They certainly would, Rich. Bunkers left and right, but they can be carried with an aggressive tee shot. And it'll set up just a short on into a green that pitches towards you. Um, so maybe just a little bit underneath the flag with a second shot. Really a chance to uh, have a fast finish. Coming down the home stretch here at the 17th, set up well for a chance to go after this flag stick. So it was a conservative play off the tee. What are we looking at now on this approach shot here at 17, Frank? Well, the reason why you play a conservative tee shot is so that you can go directly at the flag, and that's exactly what you have here. Um, it's just all about yardage. Wow, Frank, he is dialed in. Yeah, that was just some shot on that. Easy birdie. Been pretty good all day from this distance, just trying to take care of business. Really hitting on all cylinders now, nine under for the tournament. Well, Frank, this sets up for an exciting finish here at Banff Springs, a 578-yard par 5. It's just about a bunker and play for every length of tee shot here, so know exactly which one you can carry and exactly which one you can't reach. Great Bobby Jones used to say the hardest shot in golf's the next one. Judging by that light, it's not going to be too hard. And he steps up to take this shot from the fairway. That's an absolute beauty. Frank, this is a pretty important shot. Second here to the par 5 18th. That's a great tee shot now. The opportunity in front is uh, well, it's delightful, really. A good second shot here. Chance for Eagle.
unique way to finish off the final approach shot with a birdie opportunity. Birdie putt coming up. Had a par on this hole yesterday. Just a little too much juice on that birdie putt, Frank. It was bald. Very bald. Really not much to this. The only issue would be a lack of concentration or focus. Just an amazing display. The records continue to fall. So that is a top 10 performance through two rounds, Frank. It's always nice to know that you have a shot with two rounds left in the tournament. Coverage coming your way is presented by EA Sports and the PGA Tour. Today, it's live third round coverage of the Alberta Classic. Well, that was a nearly flawless performance on the front side, but Frank, we know it's an 18 hole game, isn't it? That's right. Now's not the time to pat yourself on the back. Seems to like it. Looks like it's headed for the green. Not terrible, but not his best. Yeah, outside chance, really, for uh, for Birdie, but um, really, it was a, a rather poor approach shot. Made a par in his previous round. This time, it's for Birdie. I thought he had that. So a long putt there and just didn't read it quite right. Locked in on the read and the speed. In for par. So off the long par 3 tenth, we are at the 11th hole, 417 yard par 4, Frank. It looks like a straightaway par 4, Rich, but if anything, the hole actually bends to the left and you really want to follow that natural contour of that, just sort of draw it off those bunkers on the right or just simply carry it over the ones on the left, but ideally down the left side, it avoids that pine tree that's further down. Excellent drive, Frank, right where you want to be. Frank here at the 11th hole, second shot, another chance to make a birdie. Certainly is. The only thing you're guarding against here with that second shot into 11 is just going long. Uh, pretty generous green once again. Uh, because it slopes back into the player's uh, face, the ball's not going to kick forward. Oh, yeah! 
That is an excellent play right there. The approach, giving him another good look. Not a gimme, but well within his range. Player knows they're on the move with that birdie. Quick glance at the leaderboard. They can see, Frank, they're not out of it. The things are very volatile right now. Ah, uh, nice. Looks good. Long and straight. That's how you do it. Frank, this really is kind of a good lesson. You and I had said earlier that it looked gloomy, but you dig in, you keep fighting, and something good happens. You have to credit his composure. Appears to be what they call a commercial play. Very solid. So the second of the par four goes begging, and now I'll have to rely on the short game. Yeah, but a short game, as we all know, can uh, redeem a lot of mistakes. See if he does it here. Frank, not close, but from that line, not bad. No, oh, that's excellent. Seriously, given the conditions, Rich. Settles in over the putt. Frank, we see it every single round. These kind of putts determine whether it's a good score or an average score. Yeah, and just like that, a bogey. And does not feel like he deserves it. And that's a bogey. Well, this is a good hole right here. Par 3, 200. 25 yard 13th Frank what do you think well it's called sulfur um, I can't remember what element that is on a periodic table but um, hardest thing here is not to figure that out but figure out what club you're going to use just a fraction downhill just over 200 yards it does narrow up when they start to tick the flag in the back but there's a nice fat target there sort of those first two thirds of the green
No problems there. Really good approach shot. And now, good look at Birdie. See if he can go one better than yesterday when he made par. This putt for Birdie. Well, that would have been a bonus had it gone in, but still, reasonable chance for par here. Yeah, there's no damage. You're not going to birdie every hole. This one just requires a little bit of focus. And he makes it for par. Back here at the par 4, 14th, and we are ready to tee off 442-yard hole, Frank. It's called Wampum. Uh, my Canadian's not that good, so I don't know what that means, but the way I decipher it, another little dog leg to the right with bunkers all over the place. It's sort of in the, in the place where you'd like to hit the tee shot is exactly where that crop of, what is that, five bunkers down the left side. So you're going to have to somehow squeeze it just right of that um, very awkward tee shot. Frank, take us down. Give us the player's eye view on this second shot here at 14. I kind of like a second shot a little lower than normal here. It just seems to shape up to this green. Uh, obviously, you're protecting against going left while you're trying to go directly at the flag. So just something a little lower than normal, I think, would be the go. Frank, golf may be the best sport to follow from this standpoint. You can get closer to the great athlete in golf than you can in any other sport. You, you could stand five feet from Tiger Woods at a tee box as he's getting ready to drive. I mean, that's really unusual in sports. Yeah, it's a different type of spectator sport, especially if you, if you follow your favorite player all the way around the golf course. Because it's not like waiting for your favorite hitter in a, in a baseball game. You know, you've know, got to wait several innings. You can literally see him hit every single shot, drive through the park. Not enough on that one. Yeah, it just seemed to baby it. Well, here we are at the 14th hole. It's par four, 442 yards. You like this hole, Frank? I do, but if you were spraying it off the tee here, then there's all sorts of problems. Bunkers left, trees right. Uh, this is a fairway you must hit. Right out of the center of the bat. Did you hear that? That's a good spot right there. Send a cut. Good strike, good lie, good chance to attack the pin. Frank, this is a position where a player is absolutely licking his chops here. Good chance to make a birdie. Yeah, this is when this game just looks like fun. The bunkers don't seem to be in play. The only thing you're really looking at right now is just the flag. Seems to like it. Headed for the fat part of the green. That one inside of 10 feet, really dialed in. He really likes this hole. Made birdie yesterday. Can he do it again today?
And that birdie will help the cause. Good third round, Frank, and a good spot heading to the final 18. Yeah, to be in the top five right now, the caliber of this field, know that uh, your game is good enough too, and, and a legitimate chance of taking home the trophy come tomorrow night. This really is what all those hours on the range contribute to this moment right now. This is EA Sports, EGA Tour coverage coming up next. Today it's live final round coverage of the Alberta Classic. Frank, this par four 14th hole at about 440 yards will test you all the way up to that green, won't it? It certainly will. It just looks like you should bash it over those bunkers down the left side, but the green pitches from left to right. So the best access is actually down the right side, coming in from that sort of right line. Uh, so don't be fooled here. Oh, beautiful swing, and the result is every bit as good. That ball's run out certainly over 300 yards, Frank. Call it about This is definitely not going down the fairway. It doesn't look good. I think it's going to be in the deep rough. Pretty good result right there, considering it looked rough all the way. Exactly. Rich really did. I thought he could get this close. That just is amazing. Just a mind blower right there. Absolutely incredible. He made the shot. Frank, looking out here on the 15th hole, th this looks like a spot where you could really crank one that you could tell your buddies about. It's another hole that suits a player that hits the ball right to left. It's no surprise to uh, see why Rory McIlroy plays well around here. Nice, big, high-towering draw. It's going to go that extra yardage because of the elevation.
That's fine. Nothing wrong with that one. How about 300 yards and in the fairway? Frank, this second shot to the par 4 15th is, is what you might call a professional's shot. Explain why. Yeah, there's always an advantage if, if a better player can shape a shot. So you have a long second shot, but just the way this green is, notice there's a slightly better entry from the left side. So the better player would try and hit a little little fade in there. That's the, that's what it might appear... That might appear the safest shot coming in, but it's going to actually give you the best chance of hitting it close. Um, general run of the mill shot sometimes would just bash it away over that right bunker, but it's not really the way in which that hole's designed. This for another birdie on this hole on the week. Nice putt, count it. Moving on to number 16 now, it's a par four, 414 yards. And Frank, what are we looking at here? It's another hole that'll favor a nice sort of high draw off the tee. It'll set up that second shot to a green that uh, has got several different levels on it. Excellent drive right there, Frank. Circa 310. Frank, looking at this approach now to the 16th, what does the player need to be aware of? You've got to make sure you fly the ball every inch of the way here, Rich. Uh, the ball won't kick forward because of that false front. So making sure you at least club up, not club down. Well, this one should be safely on deck here. This hole really sets up well for the player. Brody yesterday, a chance for another one today. These putts keep the round together. Just pushed it. Boy, that hurts. Getting set now over the putt. No damage done. Made the par. Just two holes left here at Banff Springs, and Frank, another par four. This one, uh, short, 374 yards. It is. It's, it's named Sasi, which is a tribute to the Indian tribes here uh, in the First Nations of, uh, of Canada. So uh, just think about that when you're teeing it off here on, on what is not an overly difficult par four. Good contact, good result. That's an absolute beauty. Frank, as we get set for this second shot here at 17, did you like the aggressive play off the tee? Um, well, fortunately, uh, you've got a second shot here, but uh, you know now you've got to fashion some sort of bump and run, but um, you know, it's a bit dicey trying to hit it all the way out there off the tee. Continuing his fine play, another beautiful approach shot. This from about 10 feet. Great roll right there. Just a pure stroke right in the heart. 
Well, here we are at the final hole here at Banff Springs. 578-yard par 5, and Frank, a chance to finish the round with a flourish. If you're one of the fortunate to hit this fairway, it's very reachable, but uh, well protected by bunkers left, right, central bunkers as well. You really have to be aware of two things, the wind direction and exactly how far you can carry that tee shot if you want to find this fairway. Oh, I like that. That one is in the fairway, down there about 290 yards. Now from a good position in the fairway, his second shot. Frank, really good chance from this position to make a birdie. Yeah, really the only thing he's looking at right now is the flag. Uh, this is a green light special. Good chance now for a birdie. That was an outstanding play. Well, it's almost a guarantee there after that shot. And getting ready for the putt. And with that birdie, moves into second place. So another tournament in the books, Frank, and what'd you make of this one? Quality venue, once again, uh, Rich, the standards of the standard of courses we're seeing is, is excellent. And, and consequently, it's enabling the players to really play some great golf. So I, I think uh, golf's the winner today. EA Sports and the PGA Tour proudly present the season-long race for the FedEx Cup. Today, it's live opening round coverage of the International Challenge.
Well, this golf course goes back a long ways to 1878, in fact. We're at Royal Troon Golf Club in Scotland. Rich Schroeder alongside Frank Navalo. And Frank, uh, where are some of the scoring opportunities out here? Well, normally when the uh, the Open Championships played, the breeze comes out of the uh, sort of northwest, which means those first few holes are played down breeze and then the closing stretch is played into the breeze. So really, you sort of make your hay on the way out and then you hang on for dear life on the way in. Um, that doesn't really change because you have some rather short par fours to start. Frank, the Open Championship will be played at Royal Troon in 2016. It was first played back in 1923. What was first prize then? Uh, a mere 75 pounds. So you, that equates to about 150 US dollars. And just to give you an idea, the last time they played there, Rich, was back in 2004 when Todd Hamilton beat Ernie Els. He got a whopping 720,000 pounds. That's right, nearly $1.5 million. The money's nice, but every player would tell you, Frank, it is still all about that claret jug. It is, and that's actually suited the Americans because uh, since 1962, uh, they've been to Troon six times, and six times the victor has been American. So from the rough back to the fairway, that's the right way to go. Yeah, it didn't take the bait, and at least now he's only going to play the price of a poor tee shot. Still got a good chance, though, getting away with par. Well, that one didn't work out. It didn't look bad in the air. It hit the green, but didn't sit. Yeah, it was never going to stop. Fourth shot wants to get this close. Okay, good shot on the dance floor. Just needs to keep it steady here over the putt. Wow, I thought he made that. So frustrating sometimes on the greens, isn't it? Drop shot here at the sixth. Just a couple of feet. Well, with that drop shot, moves to one over for the tournament. Let's take you down to the seventh hole. Frank has not gone their way through the early portion of the round. What can they do to turn it around? Well, you're right, Rich. It's been a rough start. Um, it's basically back to basics. Missing too many fairways and too many greens, so therefore less opportunities. Got to reverse that trend. Good spot right there. Send cut. 
Frank, the handicap system in golf really is the great equalizer, isn't it? Yeah, there's no sport like it. I can't imagine going to Wimbledon and playing, you know, sort of uh, Djokovic or Federer or, you know, playing NFL with Peyton Manning. But, you know, the, the, the beauty of golf, we can go out in a golf course, we decide uh, what our handicaps are on the first tee, we decide who's going to get strokes, and then off you go and play, and you play on a level playing field. Strong wind here early in the round. Not terrible, but not his best. Yeah, outside chance, really, for uh, for Birdie, but um, really, it was a, a rather poor approach shot. Frank, I'm not saying he should pull out driver here, but this is a long putt. Greens are fast, though. You never know. Good line, good pace. Might have a chance. Pretty good stroke right there. Just hit it through the break. Well, it's a sort of distance. If it goes in, it's a bonus. Standing over this putt, concentrating on the read. Frank, you can see by the reaction, it has been that kind of week. Just a few too many pars. Frank, the eighth hole, it is one of the most famous in the world, the little postage stamp, par three. Yeah, the front part of this green's the widest, Rich. Then it starts to narrow up, so you never know. Maybe go on a little lower if you're going to go towards the back of the green. But really, if you're going to air, you want to air on that first third, first half of the screen. Yeah, you don't want to come in too hot and roll it off the back. So a chance for Birdie after another solid approach shot. Yeah, it's that sneaky distance. That had to really hurt, Frank, because it looked good all the way. Well, this will test his metal. Just a tap in to finish the hole.
Okay, has it and stays at one over par. Ready to go here at the ninth at Royal Troon Golf Club. 423 yards. What are you looking to do with this one, Frank? Well, it's another one that's a dog leg left. Um, it's called the Monk, actually, because it faces the village of Monktown. One bunker on the left, 285 yards to carry that. But it's not that you're trying to carry it. It's you're trying to cut the ball off that. Not the longest, but not bad. 295 yards in the fairway. Chance to set himself up for a good scoring opportunity with his second shot here. This is going to be a tough day on the links. I mean, even the seagulls are walking to work.
So the second of the par four goes begging, and now I'll have to rely on the short game. Yeah, but a short game, as we all know, can uh, redeem a lot of mistakes. Let's see if he does it here. Solid play, heart of the green. You don't want to let this one get away. This is about concentration and focus at this point. Just trying to keep this round on track. Has that putt, stays at one over. Nine holes in the books here at Royal Troon. Rich Lerner alongside Frank Nabilo, who played the Open Championship on two occasions, once alongside Tiger Woods. And we're getting set for the back nine action. Frank, 10th hole, what's it look like? Well, from the championship tees, it's actually a blind tee shot and a dog leg to the left, where you're actually hitting your tee shot over the sand hills. Not a single bunker on the 10. Yeah. Whoop, this has taken off on a weird line. And it's going to be in the rough, it looks like. Uh, errant tee shot here, Rich, but going to have to muscle this one out of the rough. You'll need to be strong with this. So missed the fairway, and now he's back where he needs to be. Yeah, minimize the problems. Third shot, looking for a good one. the game look very simple right now. See it, hit it, and he's got it right on track. Shouldn't be a problem here, but not a formality either. Oh, I thought he had that. Missed putt, and a drop shot here at the 10th. He's putting for bogey now. Frank, this is just an embarrassing performance. There's, there's no crying in golf, Rich. Daunting tee shot here at the par 4 11th, Frank. This is all you want. Yeah, this requires your best tee shot. Doesn't matter if it goes left to right or right to left. This is a must-hit fairway. Otherwise, you don't know what you're going to finish up shooting. Like the looks of this one. Oh, yeah. That one ends up in the rough. That went sideways. 
Second shot coming out of the rough here. Makes the green in regulation. Birdie chance here. Very long putt, though. Got to be a little careful if it gets away on him. This one has a good line. Setting himself up for a good weekend, the Wiley Golf instructor makes his birdie. Don't forget, second round coverage coming your way tomorrow here on EA Sports for our entire crew. I'm Rich Lerner saying so long for now.
EA Sports and the PGA Tour proudly present the season-long race for the FedEx Cup. Today, it's live second-round coverage of the International Challenge. Rich Lerner alongside Frank Novello, always a treat to be in Scotland, Frank, and at one of the oldest golf clubs in the world, Royal Troon. It's getting close to 150 years old. It was first established all the way back in 1878. Actually, the original golf course only had five holes on it. But um, over the Open Championship roster, this has probably been the most uh, successful or provided the most success to American players. The last six Open Championship winners were all American has one of the most famous holes in all of major championship golf, the 123-yard par 3 eighth. It's known as the postage stamp, and one of the legends had had a really nice moment there many years ago. The late uh, Gene Sarazen, the squire, he had a little ace there, uh, all televised too, and uh, it was a great way to remember his phenomenal career. Wayward from the tee, and this one is headed for the rough, Frank. Second shot from 100 out. Playing this par four, still not on the green after that second shot. But still not done. Um, a good third shot, maybe get away here with par. Frank, you like his chances to walk away with a par here? Well, with a good shot, Rich, yeah, that's certainly on the cards in that. And um, and you think, you just ride a par down at the end of the end of the hole, don't tell anyone about it. It certainly won't affect the scorecard at the end of the day. So that's the goal right here. Safely on the dance floor. Settles in over the putt. Good effort and good par putt. Frank, here we are. All of 123 yards. It's the famous postage stamp hole. It sits up there nice and proud. It's protected by five bunkers, but avoid the ones on the right. They're the deepest all the way down on that right side. No problems there. Really good approach shot. And now, good look at Birdie. Now this for Birdie came away with par in the previous round. Frank, the ninth hole, 423 yards, not especially long by today's standards. You looking to make birdie here, or are you happy to make a par and move on to the back nine? Well, there's certainly a chance for birdie. One of the hardest things about the ninth is the raised green. Um, and it's sort of, there's two tiers here, just the top level. If that pin is on the top, top level, then you would certainly walk away with four very happily. Oh, this looks good. Certainly is. Frank, this is just a pleasure to watch. A player hitting on all cylinders at the top of his game. Notice it's just flowing, too. There's not a lot of deep analysis going through his mind. Just one step in front of the other. If your swing's there, you don't have to find it. If your putting stroke's there, you don't have to find it. Just let it happen. Uh, 
just looks like it's going to find the target. Well, that is an exceptional shot on the green and in position for a birdie. Yeah, it's a formality now. So coming off the birdie on the previous hole, a chance now for yet another one. And momentum all in his favor. We haven't seen a whole lot of that, Frank, but that has to feel good. Excellent front side, trying to keep it going here on the second nine. He's just playing beautifully, hitting so many good shots, giving himself so many opportunities. Can he keep it going? 